From the slots to the shelter, an update on how tourism continues giving back in the Poconos. Whipping up a delicious dish with fresh ingredients straight from the farm. Followed by a visit to this longtime dessert destination. Plus, a look inside the world's largest general store. A new VIP experience and easy check-in at Kalahari. See how it works. And a revamped restaurant. What's new? And the iconic photo still in its place. Plus, Chris meets the farm and farmers behind some award-winning Pocono produced cheese. Hi everyone, it's Jim Hamill, one of the hosts of Pocono Mountains Magazine, and welcome to the month of April here in the beautiful Poconos. We have four counties with some amazing historic properties all throughout, including right here, French Manor Inn and Spa in Newfoundland. This property is a double honoree of AAA's Ford Diamond Award for lodging and dining which is a pretty spectacular honor. That's right, Jim. And check out this indoor pool here at the French Manor. It's so inviting, especially this time of year. And of course, April showers bring May flowers, but no matter what the weather brings, there are so many different options for activities here in the Poconos, both indoor and out. We'll show you a few of those coming up this next hour. But first, we wanna show you what's been making headlines all across the Poconos. Family friendly, affordable, and just a short drive away. On NBC10, Philadelphia's latest trip to the Poconos, Sheila Watko made a splash at Camelback Resort in Tannersville. From year round fun inside Aquatopia Indoor Water Park and the 450 plus room hotel to this outdoor adventure area and the ski mountain transforming into Pennsylvania's largest outdoor water park, there is so much to do here each and every season. 84 degrees year round from one indoor water park to the next. Travel and Leisure magazine helped announce that HGTV star and celebrity designer Nate Berkus has teamed up with Great Wolf Lodge in the Poconos to design the outdoor living areas of these private woodland villas currently under construction. Ideal for large groups, multi-generational travel and extended stays, the villas are part of a major $125 million expansion and renovation project. The Amtrak study aims to have three round trips a day from Scranton and the Poconos to New York. A study is out finding a proposed passenger rail line between Scranton through the Poconos to New York City would benefit the region to the tune of $84 million. PA, along with rail operators, have officially applied for a federal program to help fund the restoration of passenger rail service which Congressman Matt Cartwright is optimistic has a greater chance of success now. That means jobs. It means good paying jobs and it means that, you know, our, our kids don't have to move away uh, to get uh, gainful employment and, and chances to advance themselves. Uh, when our economy improves in that way, it's going to be a complete game changer for our area. Some special guests are delivering the meals all week long. The Pocono Mountains Visitors Bureau joined the delivery efforts of Monroe County Meals on Wheels, delivering to roughly a dozen homes last month to help give back. You know, we put it out there to our staff and those who were available, uh, made sure that they s cleared their schedule for the day. And again, you know, we're working with our East Stroudsburg University student interns as well, so giving them the experience uh, to give back. So it's going to be a great day. We're excited to be here. On a recent episode of Pocono Mountains Magazine, we showed you some of the ways tourism gives back across the four county region. And we wanted to give you an update, which brings us here to one of the largest no-kill animal shelters in the Pocono Mountains. Very, very friendly. Chance the dog is happy and healthy, enjoying his second chance at life. Six months ago, he was found abandoned and emaciated. Very sweet boy, but he obviously needed some attention. Camp Papillion Animal Shelter in Stroudsburg immediately stepped in. Founded in 2015 and operating from a 33-acre former summer camp, the pups have plenty of land for long walks and socialization. We don't have any kind of uh, government funding, so we rely 100% on donations. To the shelter, from the slot. Mount Airy Casino Resort recently donated thousands of gently used linens and bedding to Camp Papillion. A big help since the shelter's services are in high demand, leaving little time for laundry. That's really special and it, it always seems to come when we need it the most. So we're so grateful. 
that they're thinking about us. It is like just shows such a high level of compassion. As a top tourist destination in the Poconos, Mount Airy's general manager says it's only right to give back. Since opening in 2007, Pennsylvania's first AAA Four Diamond Casino Resort has generated over $3 billion in gross revenue, contributing $1.5 billion in tax revenue and fees to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. That economic impact trickles down locally. We are the largest uh, taxpayer in Monroe County here in the Poconos. We are one of the largest employers uh, with almost 900 employees providing full-time jobs, full benefits. And then on top of that, Mount Area Casino Resort has generated about $2 billion in just revenue for the local community. From pets to people, Mount Airy recently worked with Pocono Mountains United Way to donate excess inventory such as luggage, cookware, and first aid kits to several nonprofits serving the Poconos. Now, over the past year, we've given over a million dollars through our foundation uh, to local charities, local organizations. Part about being a business in any community is the ability to give back to that community. And uh, we're gonna keep on doing it as long as these doors are open. Oh my God, thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you so much for being part of the community. Including around the holidays, giving back in the grocery store. Where we had Mount Airy elves pop out of aisles and surprise local residents with gift cards, you know, up to $250, $500. Because, you know, the holidays, even though they're a wonderful festive time, they can be a stressful time. <laughs> Back at Camp Papillion, as dozens of cats and dogs wait for their forever homes, they'll do so comfortably. A win for all. With the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strunk. Hey, it's Jim Hamill and my daughter Prudence. We're at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions where there's a whole new way to check in at this resort and Find out where Prudence got this pretty cool green sword. That's coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Who's hungry? Coming up, Deanna shows us this true farm to fork culinary experience. Then we'll head to a dessert destination, just in time for Easter. Jim Hemmel and Brianna Trunk will be right back with more Pocono Mountains Magazine. A special thanks to our sponsors, St. Luke's Monroe Campus, East Strasburg University, and Lehigh Valley Hospital, Pocono. There are so many things to do in the Poconos, like riding your bike on the DNL Trail. Visit PoconoMountains.com. For a warm welcome and refreshing wine, Three Hammers Winery really delivers. The Hawks and 2nd District Brew Farm are grown right here. At Insurrection Distillery, you'll get a big city feel in our small town setting. Your trail awaits you. Make it whatever you want. Wineries, breweries, or distilleries. I've always wanted to craft a trail. <laughs> of course you do. Visit PoconoBeverageTrail.com. Hi everyone, it's Jim Hamill and we are back at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions here for a whole new guest check-in experience. They've got kiosks that help you check in and a new VIP experience with my man Josh here. Hello Josh. Hi, welcome to Kalahari Mr. Hamill. We've been expecting you. Thank you. Let's go inside for the full experience here. We are back again. It was a little over a year ago that we came and splashed around at Kalahari, and now we want to check out the arcade and get some sweet treats too. So Josh is going to take care of our bags here, and we're going to head on in to the Emerald Lounge. No hands. No hands. Whoa, we're here. Check this out. Prudence, the Emerald Lounge. Hello. Hi, good morning. Welcome to the Emerald Lounge here at Kalahari Resorts, Mount Pocono. You're checking in as our VIP guest today? Yes, I am. Thank you so much. So I have some coffee and tea, Ooh. and I have some muffins here, uh -huh. and other snacks. Would you like a snack? 
you have our Big Five Suite. Wow, that's our most luxurious suite. Big Five, what do you think, <laughs> huh? Regina was the absolute best, taking care of our visit from start to finish and treating Prudence like royalty. Because you are officially our VIP guest, and because this is not your first visit, I have a beautiful emerald sword for you. I now make you Princess of Kalahari. What do you say? <laughs> Kalahari in the Poconos is the only resort to have the Emerald Lounge VIP experience so far. And so far, so good. Tell me what everybody's been kind of saying about the experience. Our VIP guests love it. This is new for them. We wanted to give them a grander experience of being a VIP here at Kalahari. So we incorporated this lounge for their check-in, and ever since becoming a VIP, all our VIPs say they're never going back. <laughs> VIP guests get early check-in, late check-out, and valet, as well as concierge service. Right, so I would like ready? to welcome you to your Big Five seat. Thank you, Regina. Oh my, beautiful prudence full kitchen, stainless steel with granite countertops, and you have all the bells and whistles. Each sofa pulls out into a bed, and you can have up to 21 guests. 21 people in here. Who should we invite? All right, Prudence has been waiting to get to the arcade, Regina, and now that we're here, so awesome. it is so much fun. So many different games for kids of all ages, and even the big kids, too. So let's go check them I out. I think something that you might like would be this way. Let's go. What do you think? Oh, look at that. Watch, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, no. Also new at Kalahari are the kiosks where you could do a self check-in if you're a guest here. That means you don't have to wait in many lines at all because there are several of these at the lobby. And that means right into the water park and right into all the fun. That was our goal is to provide an efficient, streamlined, easy to maneuver arrival experience. And the kiosks really allow us to do that. They cut down on not only the length of the, the check-in time, but also the waiting. Kalahari plans to expand from 11 kiosks to 16 soon. What could be sweeter than that? Birthday cake. She would like some birthday cake ice cream. Hello. So this last bite was one of the icing on the cake for this entire experience here at Kalahari Resorts and Conventions. These kind of things too can be found in this VIP experience. Tell me about that more. Absolutely. We do put a surprise sweet treat in the rooms of our VIP guests. I'm not going to tell you what it is okay. because it's a surprise, but the sweet treat does come from the last bite. And Prudence and I have had a blast. Thank you so much for hosting us. My we pleasure. We really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to your next visit. Oh, and we'll be back. That is for sure. So for <laughs> Regina, Prudence, this is Jim Hamill for the Pocono Television Network here at Kalahari and the new VIP experience. Hi again, Jim Hamill here with my daughter Prudence. And when we're not playing around in the Poconos, we are what? Picking up the Poconos. And of course, April 22nd, Earth Day, is a time all across the four counties and the Pocono Mountains to help clean up for spring. So please head to pickupthepoconos.com to sign up to volunteer. You'll get some grabbers, bags, some vests, and some gloves, and you'll be able to head out all across the Pocono Mountains to help make a difference and make sure we're leaving no trace. So head to pickupthepoconos.com. Come on, Prudence, we got some work to do. Magazine, see how we go from seed to sandwich. A sweet destination, 71 years in the making, and just in time for Easter, coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. Dan, you know what I love about the Pocono Mountains the most? No, what, Chris? You kind of feel like it's your own place. And it has something for everybody? Right. And it's for every season. Right. And and it's a place where you could have you time or that 
great time with your family. Mm, I like it. I know you do. <laughs> but show us your Pocono place. Use hashtag Pocono Places on your favorite social media channel. It's the great Pocono Raceway Air Show, May 27th and 28th. See the U.S. Navy Blue Angels precision fly the F-18 Hornet. Then watch the greatest fighter in the world, the F-22 Raptor, rip up the sky. Tickets available at PoconoAirShow.com. That sounds like fun. Yes! <sighs> oh, yeah! That was fun, right? Go to PoconoMountains.com. Some of us deal with nightlife better than others. from PTN and I'm here at Pocono Organics, one of the largest regenerative organic certified farms in North America. I'm here to learn how to cook with some of the products they grow. Let's go check it out. I've always wanted to take a cooking class and who better to learn from than Food Network's Chop Champion and now Executive Chef, Lindsay McLean. Hey Lindsay, how are you today? Hi, welcome to Pocono Organic. So I've never taken a cooking class before and I'm super excited. What are you going to teach me today? We're going to be making a Lion's Mane barbecue burger. Ooh, a classic with a little organic twist. I like it. Okay. Should we go pick what we're going to use? Yeah, let's head back. All right. So these here are sunflower microgreens. So microgreens are three times as nutrient dense as regular vegetables or their vegetable counterpart. These are sunflower microgreens and we're gonna use them for the garnish of our burger today. Okay. So you're just gonna hold the top like this. Okay. And then cut some of the stem off. Just and then, right at the stem? Right at the stem. Okay. And then we can put them here into our bowl. They really add a nice crunch to your uh, to the sandwich. And they're really great for smoothies too. It's a really nice way to sneak some nutrition into your, into I your diet. I do love nutrition, any way I can get it. Yeah. <laughs> So since you mentioned we're gonna do a lion's mane burger, I'm interested to see the mushroom room. Yeah, so this is where um, our mushrooms um, begin. This is actually a substrate. Um, it's just wood pellets, the same that you would use in a wood stove. So we start our mycelium in the substrate. Once they're fully white and have gone through their inoculation, then they'll go to our fruiting chamber. And that's where they'll start to grow out of the bag. We just slit a hole in the side of the bag and then the mushrooms just start to grow out. My taki, oyster, lion's mane, which we'll be making our burgers out of today. So this is kind of what it comes to look like after. Once they're large enough, they'll harvest and they look like these big pom-poms, um, which I had never even seen these oh, wow. mushrooms I've before I came before here. Either. And they're really, really great for any kind of, um, you know, vegetable forward substitute. And this is the lion's mane. A lot of people use them for crab cakes and today we're gonna use them for a barbecue burger. Well, this is making me very excited. Let's get cooking. All right. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna get started on is tearing the lion's mane mushrooms. Okay. So we'll take these mushrooms here and you'll see they're really soft. You can kind of just break them apart into one to two inch pieces. So the seasoning that we'll add today is a barbecue seasoning that I've made. It's got onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, a little bit of chili flake, all the things that you would normally find in a barbecue sauce. And we're gonna drizzle them with a little bit of olive oil. Okay. Um, normally I'm really big on seasoning, seasoning, yeah, yeah, yeah. seasoning every I'm step the of the way. <laughs> um, but we don't need to season these because we're gonna put all the seasoning into our mix. So we're gonna put these in the oven at 350 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. So now we've got our mushrooms, they're roasted off. You can see they just took on a little bit of color. They're nice yeah. and soft. Um, now we're gonna start pulsing them in this a food processor. Really good. <laughs> <laughs> um, first we're gonna start with black beans and we're just gonna make them into a paste right here in a food processor. And then we're just gonna put this in real quick just to break those mushrooms up. So you can go ahead and add, uh, this is our salt and our barbecue just seasoning. All of it? Yep, go ahead okay. and add it in. We're also gonna add some quinoa. Okay and then you can mix that all. Um, this is a little trick that I like to use to make things into patties, is to use two soup lids. Scoop this in like that. And then I use the other lid and I just kind of press down. Look at that. And then that makes I a really a <laughs> nice, neat patty. Just like that. So we're just gonna let those get a nice crispy sear on them. So you can see we're starting to get like a nice crust on the edge, so we're gonna come in and flip them. Ooh, that looks delicious. So we're gonna use some smoked Gouda, and I think that really helps bring in that barbecue flavor as well. So we can start plating these. So I'm just gonna put them right on our buns. 
I uh, like pickles and a mustard on okay. my burger, so that's what I have here. Um, and then we have our microgreens. So this is our mustard aioli. It's the best of both worlds with mustard and mayonnaise. And then these are our house-made pickles. And then we can top this, like, like use this as a lettuce. This will be our crunch. Mm. So I love that we went from that to this. Yes. That's amazing. Yeah. I it's never a very expected, interesting yeah, final product. Yeah, I never thought it was going to look like this, but I'm excited to try it. Yeah. So let's cut these shall in Shall we try it, guys? It looks amazing. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Wow, mm -hmm. that was really good. So if people want to come buy the vegetables to then make this at home or any other recipe, how do they go about that? So we actually have our CSA on promo right now. Um, it's $350, it's kind of like a buying club. So people can come in and shop um, and buy the vegetables that they want. Our CSA program is not a traditional program where you get a box and you take it home each week. You can come in each week and shop for the vegetables that you like. You can buy the microgreens, you can buy the lion's meat, and you can recreate this. And on what website or how can they check you out? Uh, PoconoOrganics.com. Okay, so you heard it. Check the website out. We're gonna finish these burgers. Thanks for watching. Deanna Fontanez from Pocono Television Network. Hello everyone, Brianna Strunk here. When you think of candy in the Pocono Mountains, you think of Cali's Candy Kitchen here in Mountain Home. It is a candy destination here in the Poconos for locals and visitors alike. And who better to tell us all about this family owned and operated business than Lynn Callie herself. Thanks for having us here. Thanks for coming, thanks for coming. Of course, and it is Easter season, your busiest time of the year. Tell us what you offer. If you want it, we have it. We have chocolate rabbits, we have chocolate eggs, we have chocolate covered icing Oreos, we have big rabbits, little rabbits, we have cats, dogs, we have cars, trucks, 18 wheelers, all in chocolate. We have every mold you can think of to put in your Easter basket. And Callie's is open throughout the year, but Easter is your busiest season, and of yeah. course holidays yeah. are always big here. Yeah, Easter is our biggest, then Christmas, then Valentine's. Callie's has been here for decades. Tell us all about the history. Well, uh, we're going into our 71st year. Uh, my dad started in Bangor, Pennsylvania in 1952 and then moved up here. So we've been here 51 years and we're a family tradition. Yeah, and personally for me, I have family in Florida and every time they come to visit the Poconos, they make it a priority to stop here at Cali's, do you see that a lot, that it's become a, a generational tradition among visitors? Oh, we're at our, on our third, fourth generation now. People come and they'll see a candy and they'll say, oh, my grandmother used to buy me that. And no, you still have it, I'll take that. And you know, it's, it's fun to see. It's fun to see that we're part of people's holidays. And speaking of that nostalgic experience, there's a room in here that shows just that. Can we go check it out? Sure. This room is really, really cool because there are the antique metal molds dating back to Cali's founding days. Tell us all about these. Well, a lot of these molds were made in Germany and these are original molds we used in Bangor. Some traditional, but if you notice, like the Cupid doll, that's one of our oldest. The big bulldog, that's another one. These are priceless molds. Can't find these anymore. We've used them for a long time now. A lot of the molds are plastic molds because they don't make these anymore. People love looking at these. And I think what's really special about Cali's is when people walk in, it is a nostalgic experience. They remember candies from when they were kids. Uh -huh. So you have a lot of those, those uh -huh. older candies. Oh, we do. We have one. It's called Chick Pool and Cart. And that's our oldest mold. Wow. So yeah, these are, they're fun. For instance, some of the big molds that are hand decorated, the big egg. Those are molds you can't, you can't find them. People come in and they pick their favorites, ones that they've gotten every year, ones that they've gotten from their grandparents. They look for their particular favorite, and then when they find it, their face lights up. There it is, that's the one. So that's, you know, a nostalgia. And everything is pretty much handmade here on site. So yes. what do you say we go in the back and see where all the magic happens? Okay. All right, let's go check it out. And here we are back in the factory. This is where all the chocolates and candies are made. 
What's Robert doing here? What Robert's doing is putting on the vanilla buttercream egg that we made, and it has vanilla, butter, sugar, and these will get coated through the enrober. Uh, we've had this machine. This is a nostalgia piece. If we don't hand dip it, we use this machine, and it goes through a chocolate waterfall. And just like that, our first batch of vanilla buttercream eggs are finishing up, which we should mention are Lynn's favorite. My favorite, yeah. And I love how you said a lot of the equipment in here, including this conveyor belt, dates back to Callie's founding days. Oh yeah, this we've had these machines, well they were made in the 1930s, usually in Germany, and it still works today. Wow. They're All built, right. They're built to last. Well, not sure I can keep up here, so we'll start wrapping things up. Uh, and one of the things that I really like about Cali's too, for people who are watching but aren't local to the Poconos, you have an online store and yes. ship across the country so everybody can get a taste of Cali's. Yes, you can go online, www.calliescandy.com, and we have a whole list of things. And if you don't see it, call us and we'll get it to you. Very cool. For any holiday or really any time of the year, Lynn, thank you so much for showing us around your family business here. It's been a pleasure. Oh, well, thanks for coming and it was fun. And thank you for watching Brianna Strunk with the Pocono Television Network. And of course, can't end the segment without indulging. Good. Mm. <laughs> Still to come on Pocono Mountains Magazine, so you can get these award-winning Calkins Creamery cheeses made right here in the Pocono Mountains at grocery stores. But what happens at the farm that makes these so special? Chris Barrett will have much more on our Pocono Perspectives three-part series on agriculture in the Poconos still ahead. April showers bring May flowers. We know the perfect place for some indoor fun. And we'll show you coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. At East Stroudswood University, you will study with cutting edge technology, you can perform in the classroom, field, or stage. You'll get involved on campus and off. You can have fun preparing for your future. This farm is a dairy farm, but you also have a creamery, right? So right. before we before we started the interview, we really were talking a little bit about um, how that's a little bit different. So, and then you talked a little bit about how you had successions of, of, uh, of barns here and all those kind of things. Can you tell us just a little bit of the history of, of your farm, which is really neat? The farm uh, started in the 1840s by uh, my great-great-grandfather, his name was Asel Dan. He was the original owner. Um, the original deeds go back to a guy named Shields, who was an agent for William Penn's sons. Uh, so, you know, that's where it goes back. We were, they basically cleared the land here in the 1840s, 1850s. You, you could trace this back to William Penn. Well, wow, that's amazing. Penn, Penn's sons owned big tracts of land in eastern Pennsylvania. Eventually, land agents divvied it out, like, like a big chunks of Wayne County. So the cows really didn't come until late 1800s. And that's when my great-grandfather married Dan's daughter. And 
the farm became a Bryant farm and not a Dan farm. Burton's son, Dwayne, took over and then he started in with the cows. And he was like one of the earliest people in the area to have purebred Holstein cows. We, we have a certificate in the house where he, uh, he became a member of the Holstein Association. Then my father, his name was Donald, um, he was the youngest of Dwayne's children. So Donald takes over the farm next. I came back in the 70s and uh, formed a partnership with my father and we farmed together till he passed away. And then I, I took over um, in the late 80s. And then we had a barn fire in 2002. So we camped out at a neighboring farm for a year while the new barn was built. Then my son, Zach, decided to come back and uh, then we formed, formed a partnership and that's how we're operating today. I wake up in the morning in this great blue state, golden finger. So we're here at Highland Farms with Bill Bryan, and he's been telling us a lot of great things about how long the farm has been here, what it's like to have a dairy farm. There's a creamery on property, which is really, really cool. Um, so Bill, if we could, I wanted to kind of get back a little bit to, we were just, we were talking a little bit about the cows. How many cows are you milking now, and are they all Holsteins? We have about 100 milk cows now. They're primarily registered Holsteins, although we do have a token amount of crossbreeds. Uh, they have some Jersey in them. They all have Holstein in their pedigree, but they, for some one reason or another, a cow got bred to a different breed. And what's the difference between the other breeds on Holsteins? Are, are they better cows for milk? Is there better quality? Or? Well, Holstein is, is the predominant breed in the United States. Uh, they used to have a slogan that they fit the farm, fit the market. Um, they're, you know, they're a bigger cow, they give a lot of milk, and they, they just kind of like took over. But the other breeds are called the protein breeds. Jerseys, Ashers, Guernseys, Brown Swiss. They usually give less milk, but they have higher butter fat and higher protein. But what we've done here is we've bred the Halsteins to high protein, high butter fat bulls. So we have butter fat and protein that approaches that of the colored breeds. Because if you're going to make cheese, you need protein and butter fat because you get more cheese out of the milk then. How many gallons do you produce a day? And you have to milk them every day, right? They probably produce 700 gallon a day. We have machines. We're not as automated as you can be, but we have an around, around the barn pipeline. And then we, we hang the milker on the line and uh, it goes directly into the tank. So it goes up into a stainless steel line and then flows around the barn and goes into the tank. How often do they have to be milked? The well, cow? they have to be milked at least twice a day. Oh, wow. Some places milk three times a day. So I want to test too, you have a creamery. How did that happen? How did that all happen? Our daughter, who was living in California at the time, working in the food industry, and her husband was in the food industry too, weren't real thrilled about living in California. Once she got here, it was kind of in the back of her head that wanted to do a creamery. The question was whether she was going to do ice cream or what she was going to do. And the creamery was built in 2006, the first cheese made in 2007. And the cheese just like took right off. Uh, people would say, well, what did you do to market it? And we did nothing to market it. It was uh, all word, word of mouth. mouth. The difference between a craft produced cheese and your artisan cheeses, what, what is the biggest difference? Probably everything, but. First of all, the milk can't be any fresher than it is. Um, they, they're taking it right from the tank almost as soon as the cows make it and making cheese out of it. So it has, it has no chance to deteriorate. So you got fresh, fresh milk to begin with. Everything is more natural and uh, it's, it's just a different kind of a cheese. So is uh, the cheeses that are sold here, are they sold anywhere in, in the market in stores or do you have to come here to get it? A small percentage is sold here because we're really off of the beaten path. You, you gotta want cheese pretty bad to find us. Uh, the UPS truck comes in every day and takes a shipment of cheese. And then one week, um, a small van goes to Philadelphia. The next week, the van goes to New Jersey, New York City. In New York City, you know, a lot of high-end restaurants use our cheese and they go through a 
like a broker, a, she, a distributor down there. But most of the cheese, though, is sold through small shops. And stuff. What's the most popular cheese? So we had three dogs here, and every time somebody came to the creamery, uh, the dogs would greet them. So they named one of the cheeses uh, Three Dog Dill. <laughs> And yeah, that's a pretty popular cheese, but uh, but we have we have the hard cheese spreads. Uh, oh, wow. We have a farmer's cheese that's just kind of like a kind of like a cottage cheese that people make cream cheese things out of, and we we make dips out of it. And that one actually just won a big third place in a big competition in uh, Wisconsin. Oh wow! So, in Wisconsin, wow. Yeah, she's cheese. got some first places with the cheese and uh, like. And, and national and international competitions. So. Wow. But we do a lot of different cheeses, which is kind of different than um, s other small creameries, maybe concentrate on two or three cheeses, but we, we have a, a pretty broad spectrum. One thing that is funny with the seasons is when the cows go out to grass in the spring, the taste of the, some of the cheeses can change because the cows are eating the fresh grass. Oh, wow. They go out all summer, but when the grass is lush, like the end of April, 1st of May, the, the milk actually gets a yellower color to it and the cheese, it'll change the flavor of the cheese. So the one, the one cheese, go back to the seasonal thing, a funny one is we make a cheese called Vampire Slayer, <laughs> which is a, a cheese that has garlic in it. And it's, so I like hang it. it around my neck, it's right? A, it's a good cheese. <laughs> but, she has a problem with that in October, keeping the cheese shops supplied in New Jersey because they all buy it for Halloween. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh for like Halloween parties and stuff. Yeah. That's really neat. So in the in the winter, do you feed them hay? Um, in the winter, the cows get, uh, well, all year long, e even when they're out on grass, they get supplemented with something called a total mixed ration. Uh, we take all the ingredients the cows eat and mix it together. So every bite they take, they're getting a nutritionally balanced uh, oh, wow. diet. And all year long, we feed silage, corn silage, which is the corn stalk and the ear ground up. Do you, do you grow some of that here, the corn? Corn, yeah, we grow the corn. We grow that silage here. We feed- Silage, I'm sorry, what does that mean? Silage is, it's in silage. It's uh, gone through the fermentation process. Oh. And it, it, it ferments and that preserves it. Early in the spring, we chop the grass and put that in a silo or a, what they call an egg bag, a, a big plastic tube. So we feed a lot of that all year, but we do put up a lot of dry hay and every day they get dry hay. But, but that's not, in the old days, that was pretty much their entire diet. But now we've supplemented it with other, other kinds of, they're getting, still getting the grass, but it's in a different form. Bill, how's farming, well I should say I was dairy farming, right? How has that changed in the last 20 years? I was born in 1950, and in 1950, this township, which is, it's called Damascus Township, Wayne County, there were more dairy cows in this township than any township east of the Mississippi River. And there were probably 2,000 dairy farms. I mean, when I, when I grew up, every place on the road, there, was, there were dairy cows. And, and nationally, this is a good statistic too, I just read this the other day, in the past five years, half the dairy farms in the United States have disappeared. Gone from 60,000 to 30,000 in the last five years. Is it, go, is it uh, conglomerates that are dairy farming now? or Those small farms have gone out of business and the whole dairy industry has moved to the Southwest. It kind of blows my mind because they say they, say they can't afford to send a milk truck around to pick up milk at these small farms that are widely dispersed, but yet they're willing to make all the dairy products in the Southwest and truck them all the way across the United States to the market on the East Coast. But, but it kind of all boils down to technology. Uh, there's a lot of technology out there. So to kind of wrap up here, where do you see this farm in the next five to 10 years and the creamery itself? Where do, where do you see that going? It's kind of scary, I guess, because uh, some of the experts will say that in 10 years, there'll be none of these farms. They'll all be gone. Uh, wow, we hope not. Huh? We hope not. You know, they say that. But I mean, you, you have the consumer out there that wants to buy local, 
but the whole system is geared to almost prevent them from buying local. It seems like you're bucking the trend here. I mean, with your creamery and your, yeah. the, you're really doing a lot of great things. Yeah. In in, in Wayne County. And you know, it's kind of a joke that that we'll be the last farm in Wayne County. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope you're always here and I hope the rest of the farms are always here too, Bill. But thanks for being with us today. You were great oh. to provide us this time and to host us, which we really appreciate. And this is the third part of our three-part series in farming in the Pocono Mountains. Farming that you really didn't think you'd expect to find here, but it is here. Uh, this is a dairy farm, which is different than the other two folks that we talked to. They have a creamery on site, artisan cheeses, which are amazing, that are sold in many big cities throughout the Northeast. So for Bill, I'm Chris Barrett for PTN, the Pocono Television Network. You've been watching Pocono Perspectives, and as always, thanks for watching. April showers bring May flowers, and we're heading to the perfect place in the Poconos for some rainy day fun. The team that we have put together of sport performance coaches and athletic trainers is why parents should choose St. Luke's University Health Network for their sport performance needs. St. Luke's and our coaches are going to provide the safest and most comprehensive training environment that a student athlete would want. And I, I don't think there's anything in this area that can rival it. April showers bring May flowers, and on a day like this, we know the perfect place to head for some indoor fun. <laughs> Welcome to Country Junction, the world's largest general store. We're located in Lehighton, PA. People can find everything at Country Junction. We have family entertainment, we have pets. Hi! We have everything for your house that you can imagine. We try to keep it interesting, fresh, we move things around, we buy different things in all the time. It should be a different place to come every time you come and visit. So our arcade is pretty new. We do tons of parties with our arcade. What? <laughs> we have the new bumper car, Flip and Spin. We have the Yellow Brick Road, which is in itself just a wonderful place to walk. You can bring your pets. We even have furniture. Ashley Furniture Store, we have a home store right in our area. That is really peanut buttery in the best way possible. We have our own homemade fudge and candy shop. We have a winery where we do samples. We also have the barn door restaurant so that you can come and grab anywhere from pizza, hoagies, to a Italian meal. We have an ice creamery. All right, one more. We also have a free petting zoo too for the kids to visit. They could go feed our cow buttercup. We definitely have events all throughout the year. Our biggest events coming up is going to be our summer fest, where we're going to have the carnival ride activities running all every weekend all summer long. We move our petting zoo animals out to our petting farm. We also have a big October festival coming up, which is our biggest festival that we have. Come pick your own pumpkins, hay rides, paintball, and we have laser tag. We have the Easter Bunny and free egg hunts every year, and we also have Santa. Sure, I have a short temper. Call me a crab apple. Country Junction is a family business. My father is the owner. 
He started this uh, when I was very young, and his main goal is just to make families happy, uh, provide a place for you to come and enjoy yourself for the whole day, and we hope to keep that tradition going. Country Junction is designed to have fun for every age, grandparents, parents, kids, the whole family. With the Pocono Television Network, I'm Brianna Strzok. It's the only place in the Poconos with a new menu and where you can have a little drink with Andy Warhol and John Lennon. That's coming up on Pocono Mountains Magazine. When a stroke strikes, know the signs. Be fast. Is there a sudden loss of balance, a loss of vision in one or both eyes? Is one side of the face drooping? Any arm weakness? Is speech slurred or not making sense? Call 911 immediately because time matters. Lehigh Valley Health Network is the home of Pennsylvania's first mobile stroke unit and first certified comprehensive stroke center. We're leaders in advanced stroke care to rapidly diagnose and treat a stroke emergency because we know minutes make the difference. It's the great Pocono Raceway Air Show, May 27th and 28th. See the U.S. Navy Blue Angels precision fly the F-18 Hornet. Then watch the greatest fighter in the world, the F-22 Raptor, rip up the sky. Tickets available at PoconoAirShow.com. Hi, everyone. It's Jim Hamill, and we are in downtown Milford right now at the historic Hotel Faucher. Now, this place has been around for many, many years now, but downstairs is where if you're hungry and also looking for a great cocktail, you can head to Bar Louie for its entirely revamped menu and an all-new atmosphere right under the hotel. Come check it out. What we tried to do here is keep what was great about this restaurant because it has a lot of fanfare. It has been one of the places that people come to when they kind of want to escape and feel like they're maybe in Manhattan. With a new menu and a cocktail menu too, Bar Louie is back with a little swagger. Steve Rosato is extremely proud of what's new here and also what's iconic about the view at the bar. One of the focal points of the room, one of the features is obviously the picture that's behind the bar. Um, that's one of three. One of the three is actually in a museum, um, and the other one's held by, by a world-renowned uh, art collector. So it's, a, it's an amazing piece behind the bar. A lot of people come to just see that. The images around Bar Louie are from the same famous photographer of Andy Warhol's heyday, Christopher Makos. The vibe here pairs well with Chef Bobby's creations. Appetizers, a la carte Spanish ham, steak and eggs, yes, but not what you think. You marry that with the duck egg and the way that it's cooked and prepared and you've never had a steak and eggs like that. We just had to sample a few menu items and one long running favorite. So Steve joined us for a few favorites. All right, now it's time to dive right into these delectable dishes on the new menu at Bar Louie here in downtown Milford. We've got a couple appetizers here, Steve, and we're gonna get to the sushi pizza in just a minute, but first, these tacos look like they are delicious. Uh, what you have here is a Filipino chicken and pork adobo. Steve, those tacos are amazing. I'm thinking, though, these cocktails really pair well with this. This is called the dragon, right? Yes. This is made with Patron Silver Tequila, St. Germain syrup, and uh, dragon fruit. Cheers. Now for something I've had before, the sushi pizza. This is kind of like a fan favorite here at Bar Louie, but you're doing it a little bit differently this time, right? So it has ahi tuna, tobiko, and then the sticky rice is fried in a tempura. We're on to the main course now, and this new menu really has a lot of fun options, including what you might not think of when you're having dinner, but steak and eggs. Yeah. Tell me about this piece right here. Well, this falls into that category of satire, right? Because when you hear steak and eggs, you think brunch. Um, but wait till you take a bite of this. It, it is the best steak and eggs you've ever had. Steak and eggs at dinner. Jim Hamill approved. So this is the Iberico ham. So this is the, the Spanish ham that was imported over from Spain. Uh, it's been cured for about three years plus. Let me know what you think. All right, first time sampling. Here we go. Boy, that's so rich. 
it would take me a while to come up with the words because it is so, so good. It's good. That's fantastic. Deep flavors. Is that, that's really the way does. people say it. It's like the flavors are so deep, I don't even know how to describe them. Right. These are fresh, made in house, warm donuts with a caramel drizzle on top. I'm telling you, like, it's funny to go from my Barrico ham to this, but I'll tell you, it just tops it all off. Steak and eggs, very much a breakfast food, and now you got donuts. You're making me think that you want us to stay longer than just the evening. Exactly. <laughs> That's really good stuff, man. Thank you so much for having us here on Pocono Television Network and of course, Pocono Mountains Magazine. Get to Bar at Louie in downtown Milford here for its whole new experience. This place is amazing, so is the staff, and uh, certainly get something on the menu here that makes you uh, never forget your experience right here at Bar Louie. We'll see you next time. That's one of many delicious dining options here in the Pocono Mountains. And to get a taste of everything we have to offer, head to our website, PoconoMountains.com. Under Things to Do, select Restaurants and Dining. On our website, you can also find more information about the next Pick Up the Poconos Day. Isn't that right, Jim?